السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon the one who was sent to mankind as a mercy. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his household. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all those who followed with or in goodness right up to the end. And may we be included in that and our offspring. Ameen. My brothers, my sisters, the supplications of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are amazing. They are amazing. They are so relevant in our lives where we see we are suffering from laziness, anxiety. Uh, we have the same concerns regarding uh, being engulfed by debt, being overtaken by an enemy, etc. And the Prophet ﷺ made all these dua or supplications and we have it literally given to us uh, on a plate, subhanAllah, on a platter. And we still don't make use of these beautiful, blessed words. So inshallah, the idea of this entire series is to conscientize us regarding these beautiful supplications and for us to be able to learn them, put them into practice, call out to Allah. And like I've said uh, in several of these episodes, even if you have not yet memorized the Arabic, start saying this in English or in any other language and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. The hadith that I'd like to start off with today is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha wherein she says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasali wal-haram wal-ma'thami wal-maghram wa min fitnati al-qabri wa a'thab al-qabri wa min fitnati al-nari wa a'thab al-nari wa min sharri fitnati al-ghina wa a'udhu bika min fitnati al-faqri وأعوذ بك من فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم اللهم اغسل عني خطاياي بماء بماء الثلج والبرد ونق قلبي من الخطايا كما نقيت الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وباعد بيني وبين خطاياي كما باعدت بين المشرق والمغرب سبحان الله this hadith is متفق عليه so the meaning of this dua is O oh Allah I seek your protection from laziness and from old age and I seek your protection from sin so protect me from sinning and I seek your protection from debt you know, debt meaning I owing people money. And this brings me to a very interesting factor. We are not allowed to just go about, you know, borrowing from people when we don't really need. It's only when you're in a dire need that you actually are allowed to go and ask people, uh, you know, I, I can't manage, I can't cope, I need to borrow some money. Please, can you, uh, you give me some money? I will give it back to you, etc. But if you're just going to ask the, the people when you don't really need, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to help you to pay back because it becomes a bad habit. People want to live beyond their means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand, those who can budget correctly when we actually uh, are spending. So, O oh Allah, I seek your protection from laziness, from old age, from sin and from debt. And I seek your protection from the trials of the grave and the punishment of the grave. Two things are made mention of. Min fitnatil qabri wa adhab al qabri. The trials of the grave and the punishment of the grave. And I seek your protection from the trials of the fire and from the punishment of the fire. It's amazing how there are trials of the fire and there is punishment of the fire. And I seek your protection from the harms of wealth. Amazing. From the harm of being wealthy. What could that be? Arrogance, haughtiness, uh, a person who, you know, uh, has become so bad in qualities and character because of the money. Wastefulness, uh, extravagance, all those are sins of being wealthy. So, 
the Prophet وسلم, is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from the evil of the trials of being wealthy. The bad habits that come with wealth. Subhanallah, the bad that comes with wealth. And the evil of the trials of wealth also may include the jealousy of others, the envy of others. Oh Allah, protect me from all of that. Because I've got people become jealous, envious, they want to harm, they want to falsely accuse, etc. All of that, oh Allah, protect me from it. So, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri fitnatil ghina. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from uh, the, the, the harmful... Uh, trials of wealth subhanallah amazing it's amazing how it's worded because it's something that's even difficult to explain in the english language or in another language it's unique it's jawami'ul kalim it's the gift of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of a few words having deep rich meaning then he says wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al faqr and i seek protection from you, or i seek protection in you from uh, the trials and difficulties of poverty. Look at how he made a dua to protect him from the evil of wealth. The evils of being wealthy. And then he says, and from the trials of being poor. They're both the duas are here. No one can say he missed something out. Because he is saying, oh Allah, protect me from poverty. And protect me if I were to be given wealth from the harm that that wealth comes with. Subhanallah, amazing, amazing. Uh, these words, they bring tears to the eyes because we think of how the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't really need all of this, but he called out to Allah. He called out to Allah. How much do we call out to Allah? How much do we call out to Allah? Have you ever said, have I ever said, Oh Allah, protect me from the evil that will come with wealth. So I, I can be honest with you, besides from the hadith and reading the hadith and going through the hadith, I cannot remember actually calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but now I'm going to become more conscious of it and I invite you all to become more conscious of it. Oh Allah, protect me from the evil and the trials of wealth and being wealthy. I may not be wealthy right now, but the money that comes into my pocket, subhanallah. Do you know, something's come to my mind right now. When we have wealth, we have to pay zakah. Zakah is compulsory. We, you have to give a certain percentage. When that wealth becomes so much, shaitan can come to you and start making you miscalculate or try to say, no, I don't have to give so much and, and this and that. Because it becomes difficult. When, when the figure becomes huge, the percentage is the same, but the figure becomes more difficult to give. Imagine 2.5% 2 of 100 is only 2.5 pounds or 2.5 dollars. But 2.5% of 100 million is what? Subhanallah. You ready to give that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So these are some of the trials of wealth that the Prophet ﷺ is asking Allah to protect him from. And what about us? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us wealth, to grant us wealth, to grant us sustenance, to make us rich. But we forget to ask him, Oh Allah, protect us from the evil that's going to come with that. Protect us from the evil that might come with it and that does come generally with wealth. So this is the beauty of uh, the wording of the Prophet ﷺ. He, say, he says, firstly, he says, Oh Allah, protect me from uh, the evil of the trials of wealth. And, the, and then he says, Oh Allah, protect me from uh, the trials of poverty as well. Poverty comes with a lot of trials, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all those who are struggling uh, financially, may He grant them ease and sustenance. May He bless every one of us with beautiful sustenance that is pure and that we will be able to use in His obedience and not in His disobedience. Amin. Then the dua continues, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ And I seek your protection from the trials and tribulations of the false messiah, of Ad-Dajjal. Dajjal is whom we know, we've heard of uh, in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, this one-eyed uh, man who is a huge person who is going to be coming to create havoc on earth and to wreak havoc on earth. The Prophet ﷺ used to make dua to Allah to protect him from the trials and tribulations of that false messiah, which means the Dajjal. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from him. Uh, 
uh, and protect us from all the fitna that surrounds him. When he comes, he will come with a few things. He will say he is the Lord and the God. Whoever believes that he is not the Lord and the God shall be harmed, probably killed. He will say that he owns sustenance. You want, you disbelieve in Allah, you believe in him, you follow him, you obey his orders, he will provide for you. If you don't believe that, he will harm you, perhaps even kill you. He will come with so much of uh, trials and tribulations. He believes and he will say that he is the one who actually uh, controls the produce and the rain, etc. And if you don't follow him and take him as a god, he won't give you. So those are the trials and tribulations of Al-Masih al-Dajjal as well. At any time when you have a person or when you have a force that happens to be uh, calling in the same direction, they will be considered a force that is a devilish force uh, with this impact we are asking Allah to protect us from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. May He make it easy for us to worship Him, uh, to worship Him meaning Allah and Allah alone. Ameen. Uh, then the Prophet sallallahu said, Allahumma ghsil anni khatayaya. Oh Allah, wash away from me my sins. And the Prophet sallallahu had no sins. So he is saying, Oh Allah, wash away from me my sins. Bima ithalji wal barad. With the water of ice and snow, subhanallah. I, you know, the hailstones we have, the ice we have, the snow we have, all this cold, cold uh, water. Why is it that when the sins are being spoken about, then ice and snow is used to refer to the washing away of the sins? Because the sins have a heat the heat of the punishment of Allah. When you commit a sin, there is heat. There is heat to the sin. So you're saying, oh Allah, cool me down, calm me down. L let me not commit sin and wash my sins away in this with that cold, icy water that is filled with, uh, you know, barad and thalj. The ice, the hail, the, 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 the snow, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wash our sins away. Uh, this is a beautiful dua. Allahumma ghsil anni khatayaya bima ithalji wal barad. This is one wording. It's a hadith which is muttafaqun alayh. But there are other wordings as well uh, where uh, Allahum, uh, th there are different uh, you, you know, words used and the order is slightly different but the meaning is quite much the same. And then uh, the hadith continues. وَنَقِّ قَلْبِي مِنَ الْخَطَايَا O oh Allah, purify my heart from the sins, the effects of the sins. Purify my heart from the effects of the sins. In the same way that you purified the white uh, clothing from impurity, from impurity, from dirt. You know, when you have something white, it has dirt and it's washed. It's washed in a beautiful way with detergent and what have you. And then you see it's so white. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being asked, saying, Oh Allah, wash my heart, cleanse my heart from sin. The same way you cleanse the white cloth or the white clothing from dirt and impurity. وَبَاعِدْ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ خَطَايَايَا كَمَا بَاعَدْتَ بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Oh Allah, create a distance between me Create a distance between me and my sins. In the same way that you have created the distance between the East and the West. Subhanallah. That's an amazing dua. Oh Allah, distance, create a distance between me and my sins. In the same way you created the distance between the East and the West. Make me from among those whom you've wiped the sins out. You've made everyone and everything forget about them. And you've kept a distance between me and those sins. Whenever there is a sin to be committed, uh, distance me from that sin. Whenever there is uh, something bad, harmful, uh, create an obstacle so that I don't commit that sin. And whatever I have done, purify me, cleanse me in the same way that a white cloth is cleansed and make me from among those who is pure, pure once again, create a distance such that I don't even think of those sins again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from sin and grant us 
what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is asking him in this beautiful hadith of Aisha radhiyallahu anha, which is muttafaq alayh. So, uh, when we start our salah, there is something called al istiftah which is a dua that uh, commences the salah. Generally, we say Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk. You know, we praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, declaring his greatness, his uh, loftiness, his, uh, you know, his status and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, saying that there is none worthy of worship besides him. And then we continue with our salah. One of the du'as is also this, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'atta bayna al-mashriqi wa al-maghrib. O oh Allah, create a distance between myself and the sins in, and my sins in the same way that you have created the distance between the east and the west, which means make me far away from my sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and grant us ease and give us from this beautiful du'a. Just to recap quickly before we move on to the next du'a, this dua is the dua of Aisha radiallahu anha. She says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Oh Allah, protect me from kasal, laziness, haram, old age, ma'tham, sins, maghram, debt, fitnatil qabri wa adabil qabr, the trials of the grave and the punishment of the grave, fitnatil nari wa adabil nar, the trials of the fire and the punishment of the fire, wa min sharri fitnatil ghina, and the evil trials of wealth and rich. And, and uh, you know, being rich. Uh, and I seek protection from you, O Allah. Uh, I seek protection in you from the, uh, the trials of being poor or poverty. And I seek protection in you from the trials of the Masih al-Dajjal, the false Messiah. Uh, the one-eyed devil, as we call him, and Allahumma ghsil anni khatayaya. Oh Allah, wash away my sins with cold, icy, snowy water. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's amazing. And like I explained, why ice and why cold? Because the sins have a heat, and that heat needs to be extinguished. It calms you down. You're saying, Oh Allah, the sin that I that the heat keeps making me go back to. Wash me, wash that away from me with cold water so I'm calm, I'm relaxed. There's no longer that heat to make me commit the sin. Subhanallah. It's amazing. The wording is absolutely superb. It's absolutely superb. The explanation of it by the muhaddithin is something mind-boggling. But I've just touched on it. And then the last part of it, Oh Allah, uh, you know, cleanse my heart from sin in the same way you cleanse the white cloth or the white clothing from impurity and distance, create a distance between me and my sins in the same way that you have created the distance between the East and the West. Amazing dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to move on to another dua, uh, which is also very, very powerful. It's a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ta'awwadu billahi. Seek the protection of Allah. So this is an instruction of the Prophet to all of us. Seek the protection of Allah from the following. Min jahdil bala'i wa daraki shaqai wa su'il qadai wa shamatati al-a'dai. It's just amazing how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking about it. Jahdil bala'. O oh Allah, uh, I mean, he's asking us to seek the protection of, of uh, uh, protection in Allah from. So we are seeking the protection of Allah from the following. Jahdil bala. You know, the bala meaning difficulties, hardship, uh, the, the difficulties of uh, the trials. The difficulties of the trials. Wadaraki shaqa and Shaqa is the opposite of Sa'ada. Sa'ada is happiness, so sadness. You know, that sadness overtakes us. The destruction, the destruction that comes with it. Wasu'il qadha, and bad destiny. You know, make the destiny that you've destined for us good. We seek your protection from the evil of uh, the destiny. The evil of destiny. We want you to take us to a good place. We want you to have destined for us goodness, so protect us from the evil of that destiny. And uh, 
the enemies being given the opportunity to laugh at us, subhanallah. You know, sometimes something happens. Uh, I give you a typical example of children. You just had a little fight with someone and as you're walking away, uh, having been victorious, you trip and everyone laughs at you. That's shamatat al-a'da. That, that's a simple way of explaining it to say something happened to you that, that made the enemies just laugh to say, wow, look, you, it serves you right, so to speak. So we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the turning uh, of that in such a way that the enemies are given the opportunity to laugh at us. And this is why the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. Oh Allah, I seek protection. I seek protection in you from uh, the departure of the gifts that you've given me, the boons, what you've bestowed upon me. Allah gives us gifts, sometimes he takes it away. Oh Allah, don't take away my gifts. Don't take away what you've given me, what you've bestowed upon me. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from the gifts you've bestowed upon us being taken away. What is the ni'mah? Iman, Islam, your wealth, your health, your family, whatever else Allah has given you. A lot of us are guilty of not asking Allah uh, for protection uh, from taking all that away. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to call out to him to say, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from uh, taking away these gifts that you've bestowed upon me. وَتَحَوُّلِ عَافِيَتِكَ and, and the turning of the afia that you've given me, the good health that you've given me, the, the purity that you've given me, the chastity that you've given me, whatever goodness you've given me, oh Allah, don't let it turn around. You know, things can happen suddenly and that's why the last part of the hadith says, the dua, وَفُجَاءَةِ niqamatik. You know, oh Allah, uh, don't let the retribution come suddenly. You know, you do a bad deed, you want a little bit of time to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want the punishment to descend immediately. So you ask Allah, oh Allah, delay me a little bit, you know, meaning don't let the retribution come instantly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never take away the goodness that He's bestowed upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever uh, punish us immediately upon a sin that we commit, but rather may He give us time to repent. May we be from among those who repent quickly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is also addressing us because obviously it's in the form of a dua. It's from the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said this dua. He used to use, he used to use these words. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min zawali ni'matik wa tahawuli afiyatik wa fuja'ati niqmatik wa jami'a sakhatik. And oh Allah, I seek your protection from all of your anger. Anything that makes you upset and angry, oh Allah, protect me from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, look at these words. Imagine if Allah were to suddenly and quickly and immediately punish us for what we did that was wrong. We would never have had any hope of survival because the type of deeds we do, we're so embarrassed of them that we hide away from other human beings who are not even account who are not even responsible for our accounts. We hide away from them, but we don't realize the one whom we are going to be giving that entire account to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the Allah whom we actually sometimes uh, uh, think that we can get away from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. May Allah open our doors. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah protect us from our good deeds being taken away. May Allah protect us from the goodness that He has given us being taken away. May Allah protect us from evil befalling us. May Allah protect us from the health and the wealth that He has given us being taken away. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from doing deeds that would displease him in any way. My brothers and sisters, I look forward to the next episode of this beautiful series. Until then, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa